Healthcare is too expensive. Employers are offsetting costs onto their employees. Who will make health benefits affordable for hardworking Americans and their families? You will. This is the Empowering Plans Podcast, a show dedicated to helping you once again emphasize the benefit in Benefit Plan. Now prepare to learn, plan, save, and protect with the FIA Group. Hello, and welcome to another episode of Empowering Your Plan with the FIA Group. My name is Adam Russo. I am your co-host here today, and with me, oh, wait a second, Pat, that is a better looking, younger version of Ron, sitting in Ron's seat. How'd that happen today? I don't know, taking the hot seat that way. I, this is freaking me out. Brady, you realize that you're sitting in Ron's seat right now. Folks, Ron's not here. He's on a well-deserved family vacation, but I don't like to call those vacations because Ron will need a vacation when he gets back. I can see Ron right now in Florida carrying all the bags. He's got a, a ton of sunscreen on his face. He's white as a ghost. But, you know, he wouldn't be happy if he knew that Brady not only is sitting at a spot. Did you move his— I may have touched the swag. You touched Ron's swag on his desk. Mm-hmm. Pat, what are you thinking, buddy? That's not going to fly. Not going to fly. Folks, we apologize for this, but Brady Bizarro is here. As we all know during the webinars, Brady takes on more and more slides. Ron has a lesser and lesser role in the podcast, all social media. Brady's just trying to invade his space. But today, my co-host is the amazing Mr. DC Insider, Brady Bizarro himself. Say hello, Brady. Hello, Brady. As you all know, Pat is still our producer, Pat Santos, still the number one watched ever episode of Faces of Fia, the Pat Santos Dungeons and Dragons Basement Edition. <laughs> But today we have a special guest with us. I'll make sure I introduce him in a minute. But the whole point of this podcast is to talk about the Future Leaders Initiative at SIA, which you all know, folks, I am ending my one-year stint as the chairman of the board of SIA, probably the most successful year in the history of SIA. But I'm not going to take full credit for that, just most of it. But it was a really successful year. But the Future Initiatives, which, Brady, you are currently the chairman of, correct? Right, yeah. Incoming chairman, and we'll talk a bit, well, a lot more about it with Craig and talk about sort of how we got to where we're at. But we're excited about next year. So Craig Clemente is the first, the founding chairman of the Future Leaders Program. Is that correct, Brady? That's correct. He is. So, folks, with us here today is Craig Clemente. Say hello, Craig. Hello, Craig. Wow. Wow, I got it. I Woo! Wow. First try. That's impressive. I, like that. I listen. Impressive. You listen to the podcast. He's one of the few. <laughs> Pat's mom, Pat's sister. That's it. You have a sister, Pat? No, nope, brother. A brother. Oh, mm-hmm. whatever. His Same brother thing. doesn't listen. His brother listens. But, Craig, thank you so much for uh, joining us here today. We know there was a long trek for you. But you guys have a meeting here in Boston, correct? We do. We yep. do. This afternoon, we have a meeting with the committee, and we're going to talk about all the initiatives for next year, talk about what we want to see happen, how to get more people involved, and we're excited about it. And you're excited about the free drinks afterwards, I'm assuming. Yeah, that, man. Yeah. That's, that's the real ceremonial changing of the guard right there. That's exciting. So, Craig, guys, is the chief operating officer at Specialty Care Management. Is that correct? That's correct. And it's a position you got in 2011. You've held it off for about nine years now. And what do you do every single day, Craig, at your job? Every day we figure out how to protect plan assets. And I just stole your line, by the way, I think. Protect uh, plan <laughs> assets. <laughs> protect plan assets, proper allocation of funds, et cetera. And I like to make sure that our clients are well taken care of. That's always important, right? The clients are the most important. So, Craig, I also know that you are a Yankees fan, correct? I am. I'm sitting behind Mets, Patriots, and, and Indians <laughs> swag. Yep. So, and, and I, I don't the know Indian what I'm... stuff here, too, right? I'm itching. That's okay. You know, it's great to be a Yankees fan this year. You had a good year. And your football team of choice is? <laughs> the Giants. But the we- Giants, who <laughs> yeah. had an amazing... Season so far. Yeah, it's been fantastic. You guys are playing right. great this year. Yeah, losing to the Jets is awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, my Browns at least, you know, had a win against Buffalo. Yeah. We're not going to talk about the Patriots here. We all hate the Patriots. I accept Brady. You, no, I'm, I'm assuming I'm you're a Patriots Patriot. fan. Absolutely. Yeah. So, Craig, just share with us, if you don't mind, how the Future Leaders Initiative different than some of the other movements within our industry and other associations where they have their own take on future leaders. What's special about Sai is what did you try to do in that first year? And what are we expecting Brady to bring forth as we move ahead? And what do we expect in future years to come with this Future Leaders Initiative here at SIA? Yeah, I think there was a lot of challenges. Obviously, anytime that you're starting something from grass up, right? So anytime you're starting something from the beginning, you have a lot of work to do and just kind of put your arms around everything that we need to do to drive the right value and then build a baseline of people who are committed to the initiative, right? And that's two levels. And that's that was a huge part of the initial push that we had, you know, combined with you guys with the board. 
was two, one, getting buy-in for the 40 and under group. And number two, I think, and this is Brady's, I think, biggest thing going forward into 2020 is to establish a baseline of not only individuals that want to come to every event, but of corporations that are willing to support and step up and send their people and continually rotating them. So identifying one or two people that they want to send to these things, but then also continuing to allow other people to have that experience as well. So that as an organization and an industry, we have not a few people that are bought into the SIA and what SIA delivers and the value of SIA, but a whole host of people. And as they develop their careers and they continue forward in those careers, they're able to see SIA as a value and continue to support it going forward. What's worked in your first year and what hasn't worked and what needs to be worked on next year when Brady takes us on? I think one of the things that I was so thankful for as chair was allowing us to have formats and forums on our own where we were allowed to have group activities where there was several value propositions going on. So you weren't stuck uh, with the old people. Yeah, we weren't. <laughs> right. And, and people were allowed to be themselves, especially people who hadn't hadn't experienced side before. That's right. an overwhelming situation. Right. We started off in Austin, which is, you know, seventeen hundred people. A lot of these kids hadn't come before. And so to be just thrown to the wolves like that is tough. When you're in a, a more close knit you know, smaller group environment, that's a lot easier for them to take. So I think that was number one, that we had all our own events, et cetera. And then for me, I think the biggest success, and, and while there were areas for improvement in each one, the two standalone conferences that you guys allowed us to have as a board was instrumental in developing that baseline of people who are truly committed to, to the future. How leaders. many people are truly committed, you think, right now? How many people you say roughly you guys know are in the bag. Every time you guys meet, you'll have this number of people coming to a forum. I think on a standalone or an event, you know, within an event kind of thing, I think we have a solid 70 to 80 people that are going to show up all the time. Good. I think we need to drive that over the 200 mark. So what hasn't worked? I know it's a tougher question. I guess both of you guys can answer this. But what hasn't worked? What are you guys disappointed with? Is it the number so far? Is that 80 disappointing? Did you guys expect more the first year? Is the number of companies that have been sending people disappointing to you? What's not worked? What's the challenge for Brady? If everything's great, yeah, no. what's the point? I mean, Brady's got an easy job next year. I think Brady's number one challenge is corporate buy-in. I think so that, that's what needs yeah. work. That's what needs work. I think that while we have individuals, 60, 70, 80 individuals that will come to each and every event, it's still an ad hoc sales process for most of them to go into their boss, sell them the value. We have to deliver that. That's our job. Right. But sell them the value of why they should go, why should they should spend the money. And I think that's a key part of getting that corporate buy-in. Also, I mean, just to be frank, I think a major hurdle is making sure that this thing is affordable to send multiple people to. Right. You know, you're an employer. You send a lot of people to this. How thing. many companies are there like ours? Though? Cause, I mean, I know FIA, we push in this all the time. So we're making sure that we have people go to these events. How many other companies like mine are the corporate stand? Like, you know that these five companies are sending people. Are there a certain number of corporate sponsors do you think that it already exists that are similar to FIA? Yeah, I think there's been a couple that a have done that sporadically. Yeah, a handful at most. Five. Uh, yeah. yeah. T tops. Yeah. You need to grow that. Yeah. No, it's no different definitely. than and, uh, Yankees. I mean, listen, or the Mets or the Patriots or the Red Sox, whoever. Mm -hmm. You can sell individual tickets all day long. You need to sell luxury boxes. That's right. Yeah. And that's what your focus should be on next year, Brady. I think Dad, in, in building on what, on what Craig said, I think one of the things I want to try to do next year and hopefully with the buy-in of the board, but is to get- The board's the already bought in. Well, that's, that's good. Then that's the one thing you, you don't box have to worry checked. about. So what are you going to do? I think we need to sort of more um, closely relate the Future Leaders Initiative to a lot of what SIA is doing with its political action committee, frankly, because the point of SIA is to advocate for our industry and to convince employers and, and companies why they should contribute to SIA. We have a lot of young people who are interested, obviously, in seeing this industry grow and, and sustain itself, and many more who are interested in, in sort of policy, in law, in advocacy, and they're excited. Many of them are very young, and they're, they're amped up. So when SIA has these events like a DC fly-in, I think it'd be great if we could have some future leaders go to that, right? And they can be the ones going on, marching on Capitol Hill. I think that's right? even better. Going to the offices. I think you're better off having younger people right. go to and meet with these people. As someone who's worked on the Hill, I can tell you that most of who's walking around are young people, and young people are sort of the ones getting the attention. And as we found out when we went, Adam, or I found out my first time going there, is you meet with staffers who are in their 20s anyway. Yeah, so, they're 24 years right, old. Right, they're going to relate more to people who are intelligent so and professional So you're saying they won't relate like to them. me because I'm too old. <laughs> saying, you know, borderline. You're saying, borderline. I look better than Brady does. I, I think I look better than Craig, too. I mean, I, I'm sorry, Pat. I know I'm asking you, and I am your boss, but wouldn't you agree that I am better looking than both of these guys? <laughs> Pat, I'm really handsome. You got to admit that. Can it's I okay. Confirm or deny. Fine. <laughs> so Good answer. How is your organization, though? So you're a, co you're a company. You're not FIA, right? We've bought into SIA. 
But we also buy into HCA. We've also bought into SPBA, right? We're focused on those organizations as well. Those associations are important. Tim Callender serves on the board at HCA. He's instrumental there. We set a lot of people at SPBA. Both of those associations have Future Leaders programs. They call them different things. They've been around longer than SIAS. How is SIAS, Future Leaders program, different than those? So let's say you have a company right now, a TPA in Wisconsin. And they go, well, you know what? I've already bought into the Future Leaders program at HCA. I've already had my people going there. So why would I also now add Saya to the mix? How is it different? What's your sales proposition? And if you don't have one, I think you might need one. Yeah, I think that's going to be what I think getting closer with the political action committee is going to make this initiative at Saya more of a differentiator. It's going to be different than the other future leader groups that are out there, emerging leader programs. I think those programs, I mean, I can't speak for all of them. I don't know all of them, but I, I, think. I imagine you- this from what I've heard, at least it seems like they're very regimented. I think we have more flexibility in the things we can do. And I think we could take advantage of SIA's connections and being based in D.C. and really use that as a launching point and a point to get, again, the, the younger people more involved in caring about the future of the industry and addressing these issues and going to some events. Um, I know there's a couple of ideas. I don't want to explore anything right now, but we yeah. do have some ideas for this going forward to go to you know various either congressional events or fundraising events and get people involved that way. I think that'll be one way to have us stand out. I think that it's uh, industry sustainability and growth, right? So while, uh, and I've I've participated in the HCAA ones before. Uh, Great program, right? And I think one of our other weaknesses right now at SFL is that we need to grow, and we are growing, the educational aspect for individual growth. But where SIA- The canoe program. Correct. And then also that, again, not to spoil anything, but we've already kind of teased the fact that we're coming out with a curriculum that's going to help individual growth. You know, whatever that comes with, whatever that looks like, that in the coming year is going to look good. Here's what I look at, Mm -hmm. guys, if I'm you. The SIA is the industry leader. Right. It's the biggest organization. It has the most clout in D.C. It has the most legislative power. It has the most regulatory power. And as I would say, the biggest big guns in the industry definitely going to be at SIA. So you got to take advantage of that. I would definitely do the D.C. fly-in should be a number one agenda. Letting these young people know that if you have an interest in politics and regulatory issues and compliance issues and changing D.C., whatever for good or bad, whatever that might mean, that the Future Leaders Program is something that you could utilize to take advantage of in that realm. In addition to that, SAI is where the money's at. SAI is where all the stop loss carriers are, all the reinsurance carriers are, all the captives are. From a standpoint of power lies with money, we all know DC is all about what? A- access, right? It's not even about money. It's more about you have power because you have access to certain people, certain organizations, et cetera. Absolutely. So you combine the power of access and you, the power of money, and you align those two, and you have this Future Leaders Program tied into those, now you have young people that you can say to them, listen, you can go in. What do the millennials want? They talk about social change, right? That's all it's about. It's a social justice. It's bigger, having more meaning than just your regular nine-to-five job. That should be the push of the Future Leaders Initiative. That should be what you guys are, are thriving on. That's how you are different than the rest of the organizations that are out there. And in addition to that, career opportunity. Your mentor programs, you guys are meeting with people – that you wouldn't have the ability to meet with if you were a regular 30-something-year-old kid working at a TPA. You have access to certain people, certain individuals, certain associations, certain groups that you wouldn't have access to in any other Future Leaders program or any other industry. So I think yep. that should be your focus. Yeah, Any I agree. Thoughts? You expanded on the sustainability and growth. I think that's both from a, from an individual perspective and then, yeah, as a, as, a, as a company, but as an industry, most importantly, right? And I think to, you know, as we sit here and we talk about it, I agree with uh, what you guys are talking about relative to the DC fly-in. Let's be frank, that thing has morphed a bunch of times from a SIA perspective. SIA has a great opportunity there to make that an event. I love and you it. can make that an event by utilizing the youth movement within SIA. You can get that engagement that you're looking for and you don't need the people that are running the companies to come sit down and go to the walk on the hill. You can have the youth of this industry come walk on the hill. And that's a way to grow your overall. That's the way I to grow it. the I'm, overall. Uh, I'm going to bring this up at the board meeting tomorrow. Yeah. I think this could be something you guys Craig could do. My idea. This was my I stole it. <laughs> no, but it's a, it's, it really I just is hijacked a, it. Young people. I mean, they want to be heard and they're passionate. If you can find the things that make them passionate and they, and this is one of those things. I mean, being able to go to DC and the nation's capital with your peers and sort of storm the hill and, that, and every other industry and every other context that's happening every single day, it feels like. So why not with self-insurance? I think you will find a big uh, interest in that. So, Pat, as you know how much I respect Brady's forecasting ability. Mm-hmm. I mean, oh he's boy. horrible at it. <laughs> However, Brady, at average. the end of your term, what do you hope is achieved? So we have 80 people on average that you know will go. What are you hoping for in terms of where do you want the association to be? Where do you want the Future Leaders Initiative to be? What do you want to have happened? And what do you expect 
could happen five years from now. But let's start with what you're hoping wow. for. Prognosticate. What's right. your What's your hope I, by the end of your first year? By the end of the first year, I hope we have more attendance for sure. I'm I'm, I'm thinking like Craig said, close to 200 people would be wow. nice to have, at, especially the national conference and the section for future leaders. I think it'd be great if we had, and I'm, I'm working on this now, and I guess I'll spoil a little bit of it, but I want to get something that's unique to future leaders in terms of what SIA publishes. So like a future leaders version of the self-insurer where people can contribute to and write articles, or maybe it's some kind of an online blog. Why I don't think, you just have a section of the self-insurer that or, is- That may be, that may every, be it too. Like for example, the FIA group, we have a, every month we write an article. Right. There's no question why you couldn't have a future leaders section. Yep. In the self assure magazine, also on the online platform. Yep, I think as long as it's a dedicated publication in some form for future leaders, that's very important because it gives you sort of that lasting effect going forward. Maybe even some kind of a podcast where you get to borrow Pat for that maybe, but I think that's important too because it's what young people like. And then I think just really, this happens with time organically, just getting the, the committee itself to trust and know each other so that when we pick a new leader, you know, we feel comfortable and confident in that person and we have a solid group of say 15, 20 people on the committee that are keeping the thing running and going. I also think I think hopefully by the end of the next year, again, we'll see a, a closer marriage between the Future Leaders Initiative and SIA's Political Action Committee. I think that's really important to establish connections there, to get sort of an insider on, on in each team who uh, communicates with one another there and helps set up these events, have people fly in when they can, attend different you know meetings and fundraising events. Great. As far as five years out, I mean, who knows? I, I think it'd I mean, be- you'll no longer be a Future Leader. <laughs> I don't know. I think I'll- st- I'll be Craig's age by then, I think. Something like wow. that. Wow. For when you went to the bus there. So, Shame. Craig, any last thoughts for I'm you? Only 36, man. Any last thoughts for you before we end this? You know, um, it was a really bittersweet thing to not be able to be chairman. Uh, obviously, continuing to stay on was a big... Well, you're not a king. Okay, you <laughs> terms end. Jeez. I That's wanted to here. be a king. You no, don't think I kidding. want to be the chairman forever? I do, hey, too. Hey, listen, I think it should be two years, but I mean... I think mine should be 10 years, but that's okay. <laughs> well, so should mine. We should just do this together for 10 we years. We could do that. So, f- folks, that's all the time we have for today. On behalf of Pat Santos, our amazing producer, Brady Brazaro, the fill-in co-host who did a splendid job. Right, Pat? Right. And also our special guest, Craig Clemente. Craig, thank you for being here. Thanks, Thanks for having Craig. me. And the number one main host of the show, myself, Yours truly, the CEO and co-founder of the FIA Group, Adam Russo. Thank you so much for empowering your plans with the FIA Group. Have a great day.